what we're gonna do in the Some super cool things about Grex. Why we stock it at the store. Because it's awesome. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into it. Airbrushing, what's it all about? Well, number one thing to think about when you're talking about airbrushing is convenience. So for me, using a brush, this is this is one of my brushes that you shouldn't, yeah, that's a bad brush, sad brush. Um, you don't always want to use brushes for everything. Um, and then also, depending on where you are, you might not be able to base coat with something like uh, Chaos Black or another primer that's a rattle can. You might not always have that convenience. Another thing is things like this. Beautiful Lead Belcher Air or any other metallic. Um, I have one from Vallejo that we have at the store. Um, and I was just looking at it. And I put it down and it's now mixed amongst all of these different paints. Oh boy. Yeah. Anyway, you also have things like uh, inks. We're not going to put that through an airbrush. But you could put a wash through an airbrush. That's definitely a possibility. So, airbrush, what is this thing all about? First of all, it's a fantastic work of engineering. So you have pressure, the air, that goes through this nozzle here. That goes up into a chamber, and then out that away. Inside here, if I can get a close up of that, you have this little needle, and that needle uh, is stopping the air, uh, but not so much the air, but the paint from coming in. So if I press this down, you can't hear it, but I'll put this up to the microphone. So you should be able to hear it there. Um, and when you press it down, it lets the air out, and you can feel it. You can see it on the skin there. Make sure it's in the shot. See it affecting the skin. And then when you pull the trigger back, it releases paint. And then the more you pull it back, the more that needle goes back, releasing more paint. So I did this effect here to show you <laughs> if you let it back all the way and keep on holding it, it's a big old pool. But you start off with nice little amounts like that. Now, there's a whole bunch to airbrushing because it's such a wonderful, amazing art. There's YouTube channels that talk about it for years, um, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, but some of the key things that you want to think about is time and convenience. So the coolest thing about this Grex that I think can think of off the top of my head when I'm looking at it is the quick cap. So you pull this off real quick. A lot of them are screw on, but this one just pops off. It's mag magnetized. Um, and then you can very easily get in here with a Q-tip and some airbrush cleaner and then just ch -ch wipe away some of that gunk. Make sure I actually have it on screen there. Wipe away some of that gunk and then get right away to brushing because with the acrylic paints especially uh, they're going to dry because they, they air dry quick. Um, so I did a quick little thing to show this Night Haunt. Um, this is a like literally a spritzing of the prime coat and already you can tell he's doing pretty good so far. So you have this air thing that goes up into the chamber and this mechanism right here that's the best one ever. So you press down to let air in, and then you pull back to let the paint go in. So let's get some paint. We carry Steinal Res at the store. I recommend that. It's a beautiful one. I'm going to shake it up a little bit. This is a prime coat. So um, unless you want your paint rubbing off very easily, um, and, and, you know, airbrushing stuff can rub off anyway, but unless you want all your paints to, to rub off very quickly, go ahead and get your... Uh, a nice prime coat on here. So here's the cup, and this is all kinds of different sizes. The Grex big kit that we have at the store has three different cup sizes, um, and this one is the largest one, because why not? Uh, so when you do this, all you gotta do is fill it up a little bit, and this is pre-mixed. So you don't have to worry about uh, your mixture for flow improver or thinner or all that stuff, which we'll get into in a little bit. So I put a whole bunch in there just to show you what that looks like, and then all we're gonna do is aim down as soon as I put my cap on here. Aim down, and we're going to release, we're going to push down first, down, then we're going to pull back on the, on the trigger, and then let the trigger go, and then up. So I was a little bit close, and uh, I had just put some cleaner on through there, but try it again, and look at that nice smooth pattern that's going on, very easy, and you're just using a little bit at a time, it's not too much. Nice, easy pattern, right? And if you pull it back all the way, 
Yeah, that's a lot of paint at once. And there it is. It's really as simple as that when you get down to it. Um, pushing your air on, and the different kind of paints have different kind of consistencies and whatnot. Ooh, we got some comments. Give me a second to read it. Because I am, I like, I'm like eight feet away from my computer, so I cannot read them on the PC. Here we go. All right, so Blizzy asks, what different needle sizes do for you? Uh, probably more intermediate question, but wondering if it's worth me changing needle size on the end. So, um, so the needle size is going to be uh, how how small of a radius you have here. So, if you have this, um, this is a 0.3 millimeter, which is the default. I believe it comes with this, and it's going to be that stream is going to be uh, that size. And if you get a 0.2 millimeter, for instance, then it's going to be a smaller one. Um, and it also, as Damon said, uh, it'll you know do different kind of paint consistencies are going to be easier to push through different sizes. So uh, base coats are easily are done with 0 0.5, 0 0.3 millimeter. Um, and then thinner paints you can push through easier with 0 0.2. Uh, but yeah, details. Um, I'll get into a little bit about doing detailing, but I usually leave all my super detail stuff to the brush. Um, but I'll show you some of the big tricks here in a little bit on what we can do with this. Uh, but yeah, so this goes in goes through the air goes on its own and then you pull back a little bit to let some paint on and that is your fundamental number one thing that you want to do so I've already let it uh, dry too much so it's called this tip dry and I'm gonna point this upwards a little bit if I can not too much but let's see if we can do the quick cap off bam and I don't know if you can see it too well but there's a little bit of gray acrylic paint the primer um, on that so I've got to grab that airbrush cleaner and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go sideways away from the tip so the needle is very fine Let me make sure I get it on the screen there the needle is very fine it's very small so you want to get your q-tip and you want to make sure it's nice and uh, nice and moisturized with that brush cleaner and that brush cleaner is gonna help you get off and you're gonna brush away from it so from the base brush away there we go. You can see right there, I already got some on there. I'm going to pull the uh, brush back a little bit more. So instead of doing just the, the needle here, I'm going to pull it backwards. Um, and then you're going to see all kinds there. Now, I'm going to go for it again. And it's back to normal. Bam. So, from the base, brush away. And then pull it back, and then brush it again. Make sure you're using airbrush cleaner um, of some sort. Branded is always good always useful um, I'll read some more comments here in a second here I'm gonna keep on going so with a base coat it starts off like this good old plastic the easiest way to base coat is to make sure you're using a different color primer from the plastic so this is a green which is really easy to see the difference of these two right but one of the big things that people get wrong right away is that they'll use a gray such as the gene sealer cult even though this is a lighter gray and then they'll put a gray primer on top of it. And you can't tell if the primer's going on super smooth. So we're going to start here with the green. And we're just going to spray pressing down first. The air comes out. And then pull back. Bam. A nice, even, light coat. I'm not letting out too much here. I'm a very small amount of paint at a time. I don't have to worry about too little because you can always put more on. But if you do too much, you run the risk of getting a whole lot of paint, and then you have something called spidering. So spidering is one thing you want to look out for. I'm going to do it right here. See that effect right there? It's uneven, it's splotchy. That's called spidering, and we don't want that. So what we have to do is make sure we're far enough away. We have the right amount of pressure, which I'll get into in just a second. And then we want to make sure you put a very small amount of paint through. So you're pulling back slightly. The pressing down amount that you have is never variable. So it's always the same. The PSI is what you set on your compressor. And the compressor itself, I'm not going to change the webcam because I can't actually get it to show the compressor. But your compressor is basically a motor that pushes air and compresses it in through this hose, right? So then you want a compressor that has a regulator and a moisture trap. You don't need a tank necessarily. So this one can push up to 60 PSI through it, which is more than enough what we need here. Uh, but you need a regulator and a uh, moisture trap, number one thing. Let's go back to this. 
And you can take notes if you want to, and that's a-okay. We sell it at the store. The, the compressors that we sell are Grex. They're very high quality. Um, and notice what I'm doing here is I don't want people to think that, you know, it's too intimidating to start, start the process. So here, I did not cut off the mold lines, just to show you that how you do it is up to you. It's a little bit heretical, I will say, um, and normally I wouldn't, but I want to show new painters that it's not intimidating to grab an airbrush and to get going. And look at that. So, the angle that you're doing the airbrush is super important. Um, not, don't want to ever tip it like sideways like that or too far back. You want to make sure that that gravity feed is going pretty much level. And then you can change the model how you want to. Um, and then the direction that you're coming from, make sure you switch it up enough so you can see if you've missed any spots for painting. Because you very well might have. And it's probably going to happen because the change is a lot different from when you're doing a rattle can. The rattle can puts a really big coat on top of things quickly, um, and this is more subtle, unless you're really pulling back that trigger. Bam, just like that. We're getting a good base coat. Oh, and let's show off doing it onto the actual base. So that's the black base, and then all I'm doing is gently pulling back, and then I'm moving in a sweeping motion from one side to the other, or a circular motion. So I'll show you this on the palette. I can go up and down to right and left like this. And that's a fairly even uh, coat. And I can also circle around a spot. And that's an even coat. Do you see how nice and even that is? Uh, what you don't want to do is just hammer on one spot and then move on to the next spot. And then move on to the next spot. Um, if you don't keep the motion going, the, the actual effect won't be as smooth. So I want to make sure you're doing that for sure. So let's get his sickle here. And all we're going to do is going to start away from the model. So we're going to start away from the model, releasing some paint, and then sweeping motions, sweeping motions, bam, easy peasy. And now that area is now base coated. Easy as, easy as pie. Yeah, so airbrushing is really, really easy. Um, as long as you're sticking with uh, brands and you're you're sticking with things that are have a consistent result so if you're making your own airbrush cleaner if you're if you're thinning your own paints um, it's going to be a little more of a uh, time-consuming process versus just having pre-mixed things so for instance this Steinle res is already pre-mixed it's ready to go into the airbrush I'm using this one at 15 psi um, and PSI is your, is your pressure that you're putting through the brush. Uh, so some things are going to require more pressure, other things not as much. This one um, I find works really well around 15. I just realized I don't have the skull in this dude. I didn't put that in. Oops. He's definitely a ghost, for sure. Oh, I remember. I was putting these things together and his skull would not fit, so I just took it off. I said, I don't need it. Bam couple more spots here and there we go and all you got to do is go into any spots that you missed before and then make you know check check your amounts that you're pushing out of your airbrush every once in a while I always recommend getting a little cardboard piece like this is is just cardboard from the inside of a box um, and make sure it's a different color from what you're painting with because if it's if this were gray and then my airbrushing were gray, I wouldn't tell the difference. And the big thing you want to see is the contrast and the change of what you're doing. Because a lot of your changes are less uh, subtle. They're more subtle than what you would think. Bam! There we go. Look at that. So, if you can see any green on the camera, there's probably a little bit showing through. But it doesn't have to be perfectly even um, and super thick. So, even if it's a little bit of a thinner coat, we can go on later and touch it up a little bit. And then we're done. Nice. So we've already learned uh, that you want to press down, pull back gently. Never want to pull back too much unless you want to absolutely make your model look like it's been uh, drenched in some sort of goo. Um, and then we also learned that when you put it through here, that it will dry up in the front. And that's the first place it's going to dry up. It's right there. And the, if you get a Grex at Gigabytes Cafe, then you can get the quick release cap. And then simply clean up that with Q-tips. And then once you clean it off, it's ready to go real quick. Yeah. 
So the machinery is nothing to be intimidated by. Don't have to worry too much about that. So once I'm done with this color, what do I do next? It's sitting here in my pot. I don't want to use the rest because maybe I would just want to go right into painting this model now that I have them all primed up. So while he's drying, let me hit a couple more spots here while I can see. The uh, studio lights that I have are super bright, so it actually kind of makes the hindrance sometime. Because I can see the highlights on the figures that look white. And I look back at them and I think they're green. There we go. So when I want to get rid of this, what do I do? I get this little bottle filled with distilled water. You don't want to have tap water or mineral water because it has the particulates in it that you don't want through the tiny little um, area here. So you get this, spray it in here, and then turn it sideways and dunk it out. So I'm going to move these models out of the way. I'm going to get my beautiful container. Oh, look at that. Dunk it out. As I'm holding it sideways, I'm going to get the bottle, and I'm going to spray some more. Bam. Super easy. Get some of that out. The reason I'm not using the um, cleaner is that the cleaner has all the formula and everything, and I really just want to get this through here. And then I have another thing that I do, which I don't have in front of me, and this is where you want to get it, the rest of it out inside a container of some sort because you still have some in the nozzle. So between the cap, uh, the cup, and the nozzle, this area in between, there's going to be some paint in there. So you want to get rid of that and then push some water first, and then you can use a little cleaner if you want to. But in this case, I think I'm okay once I get the uh, amount out. Uh, the big thing you want to work upon is speed, so if you're happy with making sure that the water you're pushing through is pretty clear, and that's not terribly clear, but that's alright, then you can move on to something else, and we're going to go ahead and move on to that, since we want to uh, get you learning fast. And for me, it's not terribly important that all my colors are perfectly undiluted, um, for this tutorial anyway. Normally I'd be a little more picky. Um, but for this, I'm going to get rid of the perfectionist streak that I have in my coloring. So, nice and easy to switch out. Um, if you ever have any bits in there, grab your Q-tip or anything like that that you want to clean out with. And then get the fragments. You don't want the big fragments going inside um, through the nozzle. They'll get stuck, and then your paint won't come through. And you don't want that, for sure. Uh, so then, if I'm putting something in like Lead Belcher then what do I do? So it is a cap, and if I have a cap, how do I actually get it inside the container? So there's a couple of things, but the easiest thing is to get one of your old brushes, uh, and I had it right in front of me showing it off to you guys. I think I might have dropped it on the ground. Yep, looks like I did. Oh well, I'll grab another one of my old airbrushes. There's one. Look at that, that was a base brush. It's gone. So, put that down for a second. Shake it up a little bit, make sure that lead belcher is good. Now, instead of going from the cap, I'm literally gonna pull straight from the pot, and I'm just gonna get a whole bunch of it. Look at that. What? Make sure it's on. Right into the pot, right up. I'm not gonna be that concerned about it. Just make sure you also clean your brushes afterwards, because you don't want contaminated brushes with your metals. And then I'm just gonna stick it in here, and then, with all metals, I like to put a little bit of thinner, just in case. Not too much. One or two drops is A-OK, -okay, um, as I am looking for it. There it is. Airbrush thinner. That's Vallejo. We have it at the store. Between flow improver and thinner and everything, you're good to go. So this one is called back flow, or back, I believe back flow. I'm going to put two drops. So what you do is, in order to get the paint from here back into the pot, you're going to put your hand in front of your brush, you're going to press down, and then press as much as you can against it, and then pull back gently. Uh, now that bubbling that's happening is because my seal was not full uh, intact right there, so there's a little bit of bubbling going on, and I'll fix that later, but basically you want to put beeswax and warm it up and then put it 
around here, which is one of the spots that air can come through. So now, as we pull back here, you see the metal is coming through. If I do a slight amount and I adjust my PSI a little bit, probably on the, uh, the upside a little bit since it's a thicker pigment, then that's going to go on to a model real nice. Yeah. Now, I didn't put too much paint, and I should have put a little bit more, uh, but that should be enough to show you that switching process. So we're going to go over to him right here. Got his scythe there, and then I'm going to do a test on a part that I can very easily discern. So pull back, and then there. Now, you notice I did a little bit of spidering there. I'm too close, so all I got to do is press some air onto that, spread it out, cover up a little bit, and if I need to, I can get a towel and go in. And then I'm going to keep my airbrush even further away, something like this, and then gently pull back. There we go. And it's going on, and you can barely tell a difference while it's happening. But if you turn it, look at that. That is a nice sheen of metal. So when you're working with metals, be careful because their, their uh, viscosity is very different uh, from things like primers or other coats. Uh, the thinner the coat, things that are really hard to work with are yellows. Uh, whites are pretty difficult to work with right off the bat. Uh, you can get used to it, but it's going to take a little more practice and experimentation. Bam. And that is literally just pulling it back the tiniest amount. Look at that. Cool. I'm going to go to questions real quick because I can see if a lot of folks are uh, typing some stuff in. Uh, Steven says he's been wanting to airbrush. It's uh, easier for an average painter to look better, especially for highlighting. Yes, so we're going to get into a little bit of highlighting, but the basic thing that you want to do in highlighting is making sure that you're working, for me, is working with things that are um, straight up triads. So uh, Privateer Press, uh, Reaper, um, GW has those as well. Um, but sometimes you want to blend them in together. So with these two, they're one up from each other. And all I do is I do the, the base coat, the bottom one, and then I will do a mixture one for one of these two and then blend that through. And then finally on the top one, and that'll be for a later airbrushing video. Um, but yeah, you can easily do blends and it's super fun. Um, the big thing is when you're doing things like this, if I'm wanting to get in here with the metal, I would probably use a brush or since I can I'm I went ahead and did a base coat I can go ahead and use the lead belcher here go ahead and get that done and then I'll come back in later on top of it and then actually use my brush to go in with the other paint for his cloak and then his metal is done I love doing metal with the airbrush um, it's a lot thinner coats to me, it looks a lot better. Um, you can do cool effects with it as well. Cool. Yeah, ask questions that you might have. Anything you want to know. Uh, airbrushing is really easy. Maintaining it, and I'll show you this when I'm done here uh, with this little, little bit of metal. Maintaining it is all about making sure that the parts are clean. Um, it's really not too complicated once you get used to it and the process. And it just takes a couple of minutes when you're done, and then you'll be finished. So... I've got this here, and I want to clean it out. I've got the paint inside there. I'm going to put a little bit of distilled water. Bam, bam. Dump it out. And then I've got my airbrush cleaner, and I'm using this stuff, Medea airbrush cleaner. But we have airbrush cleaner at the store, I believe. And I'm literally just putting it into the pot, and this is a little spray nozzle, which is super convenient. And then I'm going to swish it around a little bit. Let it do its action. So basically letting the chemicals work around in there on the, in the cup. And then once they're done there, I'm going to do the backflow, which is pressing my finger down, pushing the air through, and then gently pulling back the trigger. There we go. Now, the reason this bubbling's happened for this particular reason is that the airbrush cleaner is using a spray. And when you use a spray, it... Um, add some bubbles to it so I'm not too concerned about that get some more in there nice and filled and then for all of that airbrush cleaner that's going to be atomized into the air um, there's some special pots that you can get I don't think we have them at the store but you can get them online um, and basically you put this in there and you pull back and let it go all the way back and let it go through um, it's going to look like this 
So you see the airbrush, the uh, metal is going through, and now the airbrush cleaner is going through. And you can see over there was the last bits of the metal, and then the airbrush cleaner. And then once the airbrush cleaner is done and through, then you can wipe away some of the remainder. Do a little more back that you want to. Dump it out. Go back through with your distilled water. That's the final thing to do. After you're done with the cleaner, you could leave it in there for a while, I suppose. The cleaner in there. Just put it down and let it sit for a couple of minutes while you do something else. But we're going to do that. Bam. Now, inside, you see the little needle? I think we can see it. It's covered up by something right now. Let's clean it out. You can see the needle right there, right? How do you get to that thing? So Grex has this really convenient holder. Uh, so in order to get this off, all you got to do is pull it down a little bit. Not even. Probably don't have to do that either. But pull it down and then unscrew in the back. And what's happening here is this is a protective casing for the needle. The needle is very fragile since it's so small. And there is the needle. It's quite long, actually. It goes all the way through the airbrush. So we're going to unscrew this, loosen it up just a little bit, and then pull the needle all the way back and through. Bam. So here it is. The needle. Now, as I turn it here, you can see some little particles of paint on there. So you can see it especially in the middle section. Uh, so in the middle section, that is where it's going from the cup into the needle. And then that going forward, that's where all of the paint is getting. So I'm going to take my handy dandy airbrush cleaner. Going to spray a clean Q-tip because I don't want to use a dirty one. There we go. That's clean. You're going to end up using a lot of Q-tips or something similar. You have bees, Bill? That's awesome. I freaking love bees. I actually made a special video for a beekeeper friend of mine. It's really cool. Talking about bees. So as I brush it back and forth, as I get to the tip, I don't want to brush backwards. I always want to brush forwards. So I want to brush forward and then slowly rotate the needle as I'm brushing. If you have an ultrasonic cleaner, which you can get um, from many places, then you can throw it in there for a little bit and get some of the little fine particulates that you don't catch with your Q-tip. But for the most part, you're pretty good. I'd say, you know, once a week, once every other week. You don't have to do it every single time. But look how much cleaner that is. And I'm going to do a little bit of brush here, a little more vigorously. Got to love that word, vigorous. Bam. If you're looking to get into airbrushing, it really is as simple as put the paint in there. Make sure it's pre-done. Everything is done for you beforehand. Utilize some good technique. Make sure your PSI's, you know, between somewhere between 8 and 20 for most, most paints. Um, if you have a question on things, YouTube it. Call a uh, contact store, etc. You know, say, hey, I need some help airbrushing. We'll send you some links or something. And bam. And all you do then is carefully put this back in. So here, I don't want to jab it in at first because it's very delicate. So I'm going to gently push it through. And at some point, I'm okay with doing it all the way through until it's caught. There we go. I'm going to take the quick cap off. Get my Q-tip again. Make sure that all this paint on here, as you can tell, that primer level, sweep around. And you can do this with the needle in or out. As long as I'm not pressing down on the needle, it's pretty, pretty good. And it's cleaning out a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and take the needle out again and really dig in here to clean that off. A couple of strong brushes, pressing down. Don't have to worry about the needle not being there. Look at that. Nice and clean. Super shiny. I like it. Push the needle back through. There we go. There it is. And we're done. Then for the quick release cap, yay Grex, all I do is press that in, swish it around, and it's clean. Nice and easy. Done and done. Once it's clean, all you got to do, verify that there's no more moisture. I'll go through that after the stream is done. Make sure there's no more moisture in there. You don't want anything stuck inside there because it'll dry out. Don't want that. Then I'm going to 
put this back on. Make sure I find the hole there. Yeah, that's secure. There we go. Nice and easy. Nice and tight. Bam. The airbrush is done. Super easy. Check your moisture trap afterwards. Make sure that you don't have any super dramatic moisture buildup. In the south, I know it's a lot of humidity sometimes, even in basement areas, wherever you're painting. Um, and the final thing to talk about is safety. So some of the things you're atomizing, gonna get into your lungs, potentially, um, simply because you're, you're doing stuff in the air. So all you gotta do, go to Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever, get one of these masks. I can't show the whole thing. But it's one of those masks that you get that uh, helps with particulates. Uh, put that on if you're doing a whole lot of stuff. Um, for streams, I don't worry about it because it's not a long time. Um, and then if you're doing things such as... Where is it? Where is she? I have so many paints here. Enamels. Here we go. That's the AK enamels. Uh, yeah, you don't want to breathe that in. So that's... That's a lot more toxic compared to acrylics in the air. So for certain certain things, just look up the type of material you're going to be airbrushing and then YouTube it or Google it and then see what kind of protection you need. Most of the time, it's just a face mask and you're pretty good to go. Um, and then some people like to use gloves because you're also atomizing onto your hands. Um, not in this case, but you know you might be painting or doing something and then you just get some brush onto your hands. And that's pretty much it. So with just this, I could get an entire model base coated uh, between the metal on him and then I can do an easy brown. Um, and then I would put some sort of light gray onto his arms before heading onto the cloak. And then to do the cloak, what I'm doing is brushing either light to dark or dark to light, depending on what I want to do. Um, in my case, I'll probably go darker to lighter um, and I'll go darkest and as it gets toward this large hole there, then I'll move it to a medium and then blend finally on the tips white. And that'll be super easy to do. So thanks, y'all, for watching this stream. Um, if you want to learn more about airbrushing, uh, we're going to have more videos on this series. Uh, we're going to get up to about three or four different videos on it. And then you can buy Grex airbrushes at Gigabytes Cafe. Um, if you do, make sure you say John sent you and that uh, he's helping you Learn how to airbrush, have fun, and uh, have a good time. So thanks, y'all, for watching. Have a great night. And then uh, we'll see you at DragonCon if you're in Atlanta and you're going to be there. Make sure to check us out on our uh, in the – I forget what building it is. It's the first – Amerimark. Amerimart? Yeah, something like that. Amerimart, story one, level one. I don't know. I think it was the same place it was last year. So check it out. See you all later. Have a great day. And um, get to airbrushing, y'all. Super fun, super easy. Super convenient. Bye. Oh, this was done using all airbrush. Look at that. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. There we go. Let's see if I can show it off properly. So this is just a quick little airbrush. I haven't done the white there yet, but I just did a base coat through the metal and a wash on there. Um, and that's super quick and easy for terrain. So if you're looking at doing a lot of terrain, Get yourself an airbrush, make your whole life easier. Yeah, bye y'all.